legends. How are you going out there? It's Ed and we're here for episode three of our Sustainable Bites talking about climate change. Specifically today, we're going to be unpacking food waste and the emissions that come from it. Hey, did you know in Australia there's 8.2 million tonnes of food waste? On average, 300 kilograms per person per year. What's super scary about that is that when food waste breaks down anaerobically or without oxygen, which is what happens when it goes into landfill, it's actually 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide because it releases a gas called methane. So you might know more about that than me even, but the basics of it and my understanding is I don't want my kids at my school learning to put their food waste into landfill bins and even worse, not even having a choice of where they put it. So here at our school, we're pretty excited to have a composting, recycling and landfill station. We average around about 50 kilograms of compost a week. Sadly, a few too many whole apples and whole bananas going in there and that's a whole nother journey that we go on on trying to encourage people not to throw out their food when they don't like it. But if they are gonna throw it out, we'd like them to learn to put it into a compost bin. So that 50 kilograms a week, for our math students at home there, you've already worked it out, 40 weeks across the year. So we're about two tonnes of food waste here at our school. There's this great website called Watch My Waste where you can convert your food waste in kilograms and it gives you a carbon equivalent. So it converts with the methane, gives you a carbon equivalent emission. So our school saves enough electricity for a whole family to run their house for a year. Okay, also another figure you could use is it's about 38 full tanks of fuel that we save just by putting our emissions into, sorry, by putting our food into our compost bin. So something that your school might have, like to have a look into. I'm not gonna go too technical into it because like I said, I'm just a primary school teacher that's learning along the way. But what we need to understand when we're doing our composting is we need to be balancing out our carbon, our browns, with our nitrogen, our greens. So when we talk about it here at primary school, we talk about it as having our sweets with our fruit scraps, and then we need to eat more vegetables than we do. So we talk about putting in our leaves, our dry leaves, our scrap paper, and sometimes we purchase some sugar cane mulch. For you at your school, something you might like to figure out, we're trying to get a paper shredder here because tearing up paper is a pretty big job. Just find your way to get your carbon and your nitrogen balanced out. Our experts here at Sustainable Schools, they tell us, don't sweat the small stuff. You know, if citrus goes in, it goes in. It'll break down naturally in its environment, so it'll break down naturally in your worm farm. Obviously in large amounts, in winter time, we try and encourage kids not to put their whole ones in, but don't sweat it too much. You don't want to deter kids from the basics of an organic thing breaking down by making them overthinking and not put it into the right bin. All right, so guys, we'll head up and we'll have a look into the eating area and how the bins work and have a little dive into our worm farms. Maybe get the hands dirty. See you soon. All righty, here we are inside. And thankfully, like often happens, my little legend has forgotten to empty the Munch and Crunch today. And maybe yesterday, because we have a fruit fly. So that is something really important to consider is also how are you going to encourage the teachers who aren't, who see this as an extra burden, who aren't so passionate, how are you gonna put systems in place where the kids feel rewarded enough that they wanna remember? Whether it's a leadership position that they take on, um, do you have a reminder announcement or sticker? Um, it's something that is really worthwhile thinking about because once teachers get and cleaners see food scraps accumulating in the classroom and smell happening, um, there'll be murmurs beginning and, and that's when we start to see problems happen. So um, keep on top of it, leadership position, but kids need lots of reminders and staff need a lot of thanking and congratulating too to keep them happy doing it. Um, here are our classroom bins. So here's the little kitchen caddy I was referring to. We don't stress too much about the citrus. Come winter time when we get um, an overload of citrus, we do try and encourage whole things not to go in. That paper will come out with us at the end of the week when we go to add some carbon to our worm farm. 
ideally having a shredder. Um, we haven't got one yet. Uh, I'd like to purchase one because the finer it is, the better. Um, I find that cardboard can be a bit chunky. It seems to glob up and not break down as well. So shredding paper has worked the best for us. We have someone who's been shredding it off site, but we haven't been able to get to them recently. So I'm thinking about getting one at school. Um, so that will come out with us. We find the size of these bins really good. Um, not too big and it didn't work out too expensive for us. I think we spent um, two and a half to 3,000 on kitting out 33 classrooms and seven eating areas, staff room and eating area, oh, sorry, uh, tuck shop area. So an expense, but it was something that after a few years of trialing different bin systems, the principal decided she wanted to have something that looked good, an area, something we could be proud of and promote to our community and, and a worthwhile investment for them. Also was a, a case of talking to them about um, the behaviours that kids needed and, and that they sort of came round. It took a bit of time, but pretty excited to have them now. So I'm gonna go and empty this Munch and Crunch now and we'll check out how the worm farm's going while we're at it. So these are our eating areas. We do have some posters as well. They just haven't stayed up here. But we find that with the color-coded bin systems, the kids are actually really pretty good. Let's have a, a look in and actually check. Yeah, it's doing pretty good, a little bit of plastic. Here's our container bin. We get a lot of poppers at school, about 250 to 300 a week uh, in poppers. So that's also a really great fundraising stream. If you think about how much you can raise there, just taking it over to the worm farm. Uh, so here you can see a nice healthy worm farm. I'm gonna put my hand in here. Not that I'd put it in all of them. Some, some of them are much more dense than others, but the stuff we're getting some beautiful compost in. Um, obviously some fresh stuff from last week, along with bits that haven't, um, sorry, some that haven't broken down, some that have. And, Really nice, healthy worm environment in here with a mixture of paper and cardboard. And, and I love that it's in the kids' eating area so that they can uh, just come around during break time and, and just check on the health of their worm farm. Alrighty, so take home messages. Guys, compost at school, awesome. Saves methane being emitted through landfill as well as instilling behaviors in your kids. Remember, carbon and nitrogen, balance it out as much as you can. You're gonna be looking at around about seven to eight kilos a week for your four classes across a year level. So you can multiply that out for your school. We're about 50 a week. Um, remember that you do need to aerate your compost unless if you've got a system down in your garden that is going to be like a dig in, which is okay. Um, we find that the aerating allows it to process much quicker. Um, so the worm farm that I showed you, it's week eight of the, no, week 10 of the term. So it's done really well. It's a really nice, healthy worm farm. Our other ones did fill up a little bit. They weren't quite as healthy, but just be aware you need to sort of have those backup plans in, uh, in place. Friday afternoon, compost shoveling is not all that fun. Uh, so yes, take home message number one, carbon nitrogen balance your scrap paper and your dry leaves around school are a free resource that you can use. You just need to find kids that are pumped to rake leaves, all of the younger ones, and tearing up your scrap paper as well or purchasing a shredder. Um, we also talked a little bit about container revenue, which is a whole other topic to go into again, but important to remember your systems in place of how you're getting the compost from point A to point B and where's it gonna finish up? So make sure you have your plans in place before you bite off more than you can chew. Oh, no pun intended there with the munch and crunch thing, like more than you can chew. See you guys.